Welcome to Let's Get Metaphysical, the show that stretches you beyond your five senses. When you are looking for your next step on the path into the unseen, we've got you covered. Join epic adventure seekers and level up your game with your host, reality magician, Allie Bierman. Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world. And I have a really special guest here today, somebody I never know what kind of project she'll be doing next because she's incredible and really interesting and has so much. And we're going to go and meet her in just a moment. And I, I want to remind you to download Step in a New Direction, because if you're tired of your world looking the way it does, because you keep taking the same steps day after day after day. How can you expect anything to change? The link will be in the show notes. Today's guest, Cynthia Winfield, is multi-talented, a diversity of areas. She was teaching and has become a retired teacher because she moved from a state to a different state that wouldn't allow her to teach the way she was accustomed to teaching. She has two books that she'll share with you. One of them was awarded a commendation from the Advocate magazine that it was one of the ultimate guidebooks for LGBTQ plus teens in the year 2019. So we'll be going into that area. And she's recently moved out to a country area where, as I learned today, it's planting time. So I want to welcome you to our show. I'm very, very, very honored to have you here. And welcome, Cynthia. Thank you, Ellie B., for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here. When I was <clears throat> moving, in the process of moving from one state to another, this most recently, I kept myself company on the miles with your podcast. Thank you. <laughs> <That was beautiful. laughs> so what moved you to go from Nashville? Because I think it was one of the Smithsonian magazines. Man, they had a read on the amazing library in Nashville and being such a literary person. What moved you to switch all the way out? I don't know how many hours away you're living now, but I know sometimes you show me videos and the animals and a big place, and I'm guessing it's going to be a big garden. Uh, well, it's a big for me garden. Um, it's smaller than the last farm that I had. It's got five acres and probably an acre of it is usable. The rest of it is steep hills, ravines, and populated with um, uh, creepy crawler critters that you don't want to run into. Um, some of them having rattles on their tails and things. But it, there, there's there's mountaintop land that we can use. And so we'll just be efficient with that. The question was, was what prompted me to move? I'm going to say the universe. It was divine guidance. Nashville managed to price herself out of my budget, and I needed a place to live. I was looking for a relationship and met somebody who pretty well jived with me and made me feel grounded and safe and accepted. And um, they had lost their last farm manager, for lack of a better term. You know, their, their last partner passed, and she had been in charge of, you know, the planting and the, and the plants. So um, I said, hey, I can do that. Let, let me give it a try. So. Cool. So what are you looking forward to once you get settled? Because that's a big move. It, it's a huge move, and I'm not as young as I used to be, and neither is he. And, um, yeah, it's it's a slow process. Well, for the summer, planting and, and starting a Yoko farm, a farm that is in where the ancestral spiritual worlds are in line with the human and the plant nature, animal worlds. So, so offering divine light, raising my hand around the farm, offering it to the plants. So we tilled the land the other 
night it had a tractor come and disc it up and i would have preferred to do you know layering it and not breaking up all the homes of the worms and the bugs and the stuff but it's like this is the most fastest efficient way to get things started and so i just you know gave the land healing light as we disturbed it <laughs> and yeah it's it's nice and i'm starting to handle the animals he he lets the animals be animals and i'm like no they can be animals but yeah they need to be handled too <laughs> so a wow. chicken got very su was surprised the other day when i was feeding and all of a sudden she was getting petted she's like what's this <laughs> but can i get down now it's like fine you can get down now but you'll get handled again so oh that's cool i, I have a friend she's 90 something uh she'll be 91 this summer and she grew up on a farm and she lives out in the country and she does everything herself and i remember her telling me a story about her pet chicken because they had all the animals and they butchered them and she was she'd butcher a deer mm -hmm. but she say this if, if they're a well. deer he gets to the butcher okay if, if, if they're a deer somebody else does the butchering for me i'm not yeah the big animal is hard yeah, she did the butchering, and one day I watched her because she used to make me jerky. It's like, whoa, now I know how to make my own jerky, but I'm not butchering anything. I'll buy it already in the little steak. So what was it that changed when you said you're a retired teacher because how you taught in the other state doesn't work for when you moved to Tennessee. Is that accurate? I, I, moved, I moved to Tennessee at the time when the governor had it be, Tennessee was the don't say gay state. Teachers could not say gay in their classroom and have it uh, and include a positive connotation of people who were homosexual. I taught middle school and kids taunt each other that's so gay and they mean it to be a derogatory remark oh. and so when i taught once a year i would sit all of my classes down when i heard it one too many times i mean i would i was already at that time when i was teaching i was in a lesbian relationship and i would introduce myself at the beginning of the school year we would do a name project and i made it clear that my name belonged to another woman with whom i lived and whatever you know so it was like no, I wasn't hiding anything there, but I wasn't promoting an agenda. I wasn't talking about anything. But in the when I had it up to here with "Don't say gay" or "or, or that's so gay," I would read them a, a fairy tale by Bruce Coville titled "Am I Blue?" The upshot of which is, "What does the world look like if everybody who is gay turns blue for a day?" And the answer is, there's all sorts of different shades of blue on all sorts of different people. Mr. Alwayne, the grocery store owner that everybody, you know, he had five kids and his wife, he looked like a giant blueberry. And Mrs. Thorndike, the librarian that everybody knew was a lesbian, didn't have a speck of blue on her. So what are you going to do? Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, and I heard for years afterwards from students on Facebook on my birthday, if my birthday popped up and they would see it. That story changed my life. Wow. So, yeah, it, that was important. So when um, I had a publishing opportunity uh, to do Gender Identity, the Ultimate Teen Guide, the first edition, I took it. And it's a, a book that talks about transgender history. There's a chapter on intersex. It has kids learning how to exercise their political voice and and get the word out on campus that you know it's okay to be inclusive and things it encourages them to become active in whatever they're interested in but i'm talking about gender when i moved to tennessee the first time i had that book behind me so even if i wanted to toe the line and teach in a way that did not feel true to myself so which i didn't want to do i mean it would just take one parent or one kid googling me and saying you know ah, whatever it I, I had already seen it happen in my former district and so i just didn't teach i one time i did go to a training for substitutes and at the end of the day it was like no i just don't fit here they didn't need teachers like me so instead i worked for the census 
in 2010 and 2020. I remember working for it in 2010 and meeting three generations of, the, of people in the same room who were all illiterate. And I was like, yep, you don't need teachers like me, right? Wow. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. So I, I love to see what you're into because you're so multifaceted. You have so many interests. And I, I, do. know, I, I don't go on Facebook very often, but I was caught there because first I saw your poetry. It, it, you know what I'm talking about. Tell, tell me, I, I saw the thing that okay. may one day become a podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I have the book, The Sovereign Souls, Whosoever Edition. Sovereign oh. Souls being a series of books for young adult, new adult readers. Oh. And so the sovereigns, and, and they are written in verse. They are written, the, the, the youth voices are written in sestinas, which are 39 line poems. Uh, wow. Seven stanzas uh, with six repeated words. And the adult voices are in sonnets. I had read what Helen Frost's Keisha's House came out in 2003 when I still had a classroom and it's written in sestinas and sonnets. And it was remarkably easy to read and accessible for my students who were not readers and who didn't want to be readers. And it was able to bring controversial material out in a way so that they were willing to, it was like perfect vehicle. So I'm like, I'm going to use that someday. And so I used it for gender and what I call the whosoever church. This one is set in Nashville and uh, it has characters of diverse gender identities, but it also is tied to a church. And the next edition, which I'm writing now, the Sovereign Souls Light Edition is Right now, gender isn't showing up in there. I mean, uh, yeah, I haven't addressed LGBTQ. I don't, I don't think I even have queer characters in there, um, but the, it's focused around a different spiritual practice. It's not a church. It's, a, it's, it's the light practice that I talked about in, in relationship to the farming that I'm doing. And so that's set in Reno, Nevada at a spiritual center. And I have another Sovereign Souls Angel Tree edition coming out next fall, which is set back in Nashville with the characters that you knew before and some from the Reno edition, yeah, doing a project. What was the question? Oh, well, I, I was mentioning the things that I see when I go in Facebook, or when I see your stuff, I stop okay. and read it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the Sovereign Souls Poetry Podcast is showing up on Facebook, although the podcast itself does not yet exist because I'm doing too many things and haven't gotten to it yet. I, the book came out in November and I had recorded an audiobook with music by November. However, the people that put it together for me have not been able to yeah, get it ready for it to be an audio book. I'm not quite sure where the glitch is there, but anyways, um, it's coming when it comes i i might as i think yeah you had given me i might introduce a chapter at a time or two chapters at a time and have background information or something i don't know how that will turn out eventually though i wanted it to the sovereign souls poetry project is to launch other artists writers, song people, uh, visual artists, whatever, with a message to share, a social justice message to share. Mm -hmm. So it might be spirituality, it might be gender, it might be Black Lives Matter. I mean, I don't know. And I mean, pe people have different concerns, but yeah, that's where that project is, is trying to go, get those voices out there because, ah, because when I was writing Sovereign Souls, whosoever edition, and not knowing if it was any good, um, and not knowing if I was able to write these voices of youth that I could not possibly embody their reality, I took the novel on Zoom from Paris, France, across the UK, across the US, to places in Asia, 
And just about every place I landed, I heard, when is it going to come out? And where was this novel when I needed it? Which told me that it was working. And it was working because I didn't write the book. Okay, I talked about the universe before. This was a download. I wrote the first couple of lines, if it was the sonnets, or I wrote the first stands of the first six lines for each of the characters and then I just sat in the tub and I let the water and the energy flow and the words came to me and I put them into my phone and then I put them into my computer and yeah turned into a book which is it that's how I write that's how Deepak Chopra writes it's how I create anything and people call it getting in the flow or whatever term they're using but I don't think we create anything I think we just are open for the universe. Just as you're saying, the universe finishes it for you. And Mm -hmm. that way, it's the message that's most appropriate, the time for the audience that you don't know who they're going to be necessarily, but the universe does. Right. As As I'm starting to put the light edition together into my computer for the first time it it is right now series of random chapters that have occurred to me in my phone i'm reading it and i'm saying what did i mean by that what in the world were you thinking so you know sometimes and it's interesting because i have to read it three or four times and say oh okay that's what i meant now how can i say it more clearly so somebody else doesn't say what do you mean by that (laughs) Yeah, that's I'm blessed I have I think she's the best editor in the world and she happens to be a good friend of mine so when she edits she knows me and she says you can say it more clearly this way and, and mm-hmm. that's really helpful so having usually I have an editor for content and an editor for grammar and I'm fortunate to have one person who gets it all and I've uh, is, is she open for other work Oh, she absolutely is. Okay, yeah. Hook us up in the background. Yeah. I, I, I will, because I think she's the best. Editor. I had my uh, Thrive Don't You Survive book edited six times, and there was still stuff in it that all those people missed. So I was so grateful for her. I was reading a book on Kindle this morning, and I just about stopped because it's a a lighthearted romance you know um but they were they spelt what was it skis s-k-i-s as skies as skies and they were going skiing so i kept it and like it happened over and over i'm like no i've seen books by very famous authors with mistakes in them because oh sure well you can't catch everything yeah (laughs) if you get the gist it's okay good and and i love that was that original music that the people created for your book oh for the book yeah um i hired uh two different songwriters uh they were like uh, people who play music in church (laughs) um and uh, they came to the studio. Talk about the universe. One of the stories in here. One of the one of the characters is a black Hispanic, and he talks about how, well, first of all, he's always seen as black before anything else, but how people aren't valuing the Hispanic people, the the Latino people in the culture. And a friend of his is working on a construction site and goes off because he doesn't have a harness. And he sees it on Facebook. That happened to me. I saw it on Facebook. It wasn't, I mean, I saw it on Facebook and I'm like, that belongs to this character. And so he wrote about his friend. The musician who came in I, when I when we get to that chapter, I'm like, you know that hotel that's being built over there? This kid went off. She was the assistant principal in a school that had his brother. She knew exactly what to play. Wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> so incredible. That, that is, is 
And I listen to so many podcasts and boy, that's a theme that happens so often when the combination is black and Hispanic and the black is seen in the Hispanic. It's like, how could you possibly be that kid's mother? Just what people's minds do. They're so limited. I I don't understand that. You you had asked me at the beginning before we started recording about the she, her, hers. Yeah. 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 And, and, And people put that on so that you'll know because I might not look like a she, her, hers to you, or I might prefer to use they, which appears ambiguous to those of us who are stuck in the he and she world, but is not at all to the people who are stuck in the they world because it embraces their being. They're not she, they're not he, they, but they fits. They, it, it could be no. non-binary. It could be just queer. It could be whatever. If you want to be they, it's they. And hmm. it's hard for people to get their minds around because they is becomes grammatically correct. Proving, according to one of my characters, that there really is a God. <laughs> Or whatever. Thank you for explaining that because I see that more and more, and I'm, I just had no clue what it was. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I have found over the years, it's like wherever I go, I attract lots of gay people. And, and you can't always tell if somebody's had the surgery or the hormones, everything that you were just saying. I asked one of my friends, how come I attract this? I, I was ordained. You're safe. Mm-hmm. What? You're safe. <laughs> yeah, the, it was the ministry where I was ordained was mm-hmm. run by a lesbian couple. And mm-hmm. two of the elders, that was a gay couple. And mm-hmm. so there was, and what surprised me was this was Boise, Idaho. And I would have thought that there'd be a lot of, it's in Boise, it was okay. If you went out in the country, it was redneck. But there are a lot of open-minded people in places you don't expect it. Which- but I'm, I, I'm out in the country and I haven't met all the people yet, but I'm told that there are some pretty open-minded people here. That, 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 that there's an LGBT subsection somewhere here i haven't found it yet but i know that the library is welcoming because i brought my books there and said hey could you put these on the shelves and they said look we have you know i I didn't see the sticker but i it's something like the lgbtq safe space sticker i used to have on my classroom door you know that's really that's really cool what do you see as your next big project i've heard a lot about the garden (laughs) Okay, well, there's the garden, um, which is, yeah, a big project because um, I haven't gardened in a couple of years, so it'll be fun again. Uh, it's been more than a couple of years because my last farm, I really didn't garden. I just did animals. And I, at the end of the Yoko farm season, and Yoko farming is important. It's beyond organic or biodynamic i don't know that i'll be doing biodynamic um to the extent that the person with whom i live is accepting i mean you know i i i'm in a new place to me but by offering plants divine light i'm hoping to bring another level of growth and nutrition to the plants that are then going out into the community to feed the people of the community and so i'm excited about that at the end of the growing season though i would like to launch writing strategies that work i need to launch the podcast sooner there's one episode out it's been out for about a year but i haven't launched the podcast because yeah i think i recorded some episodes but i haven't yeah gone back to polish them and get them up um But with writing strategies that work, I have a Facebook page that has been going since the beginning of 2022, pretty much with a daily writing prompt. So if people 
are looking for ideas, uh, something well, to write about. that in the link, because that was the other thing I thought that I stopped to read. Right, right. Writing strategies at work. And I will hopefully by the fall start offering group classes uh, with one-on-one -on -one time for people who have, because I believe everybody has a story inside them. Mm -hmm. And it would be a shame to take the stories to the grave. And I have worked with kids who did not believe they were writers, but trust me, if you can make a grocery list, you're a writer. And, and I can help you find a way to, you know, get your story onto paper or maybe audio instead, you know, if you maybe want to tell it. So. Yeah, and there's great software out there where you can speak your book and it will be printed. When mm -hmm. my kids were young, I, I write music. So I would go into like second graders, seven years old, uh, eight year olds, and they write poems. And I'd set them the music and to see their faces, mm -hmm. it was just, it was so cool. And then I, I did that with a teenager. And like you said, everybody's a writer. And I think especially when you pair it with music, it takes it to another level. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. The, I actually purchased the music that I want to use for my next book from a classmate of mine. He already had it out on a CD and it's like, oh, I want pieces of this. It's just beautiful. And he's like, sure, you can use it. And I am, you were talking about next projects. I am currently kind of ongoing as, as they pop up, like teaching writing classes online. Um, this month I've been doing a writing class on Friday afternoons for kids out of Pasadena on Zoom. And uh, tomorrow morning I'm teaching kids in Bangladesh, although it will be evening for them. Um, and yeah, so it's fun, you know, starting to do that again. And you follow your heart, so that's why you can get the messages coming to you. Because I never have, well, I think we're in 12 or 15 countries with the podcast, but I don't know who's listening to my podcast, unfortunately. So that's you never do. Yeah, that's, I, I've been putting out projects to get people, to encourage them to come in and talk to me, but I haven't put out the right project yet. So oh, you mentioned a couple of times about the plants and what you're doing. I never heard of that kind of gardening that you're talking about. It's allied with a spiritual practice that I'm not sure I am going to choose to name um, because when I, <laughs> I okay. yeah, apparently the organization, I, I'm not sure what I can say, but it's, it's a light practice that comes out of Japan uh, part of it is saying that we are, you know, in it, moving out of a age of materialism and we're moving into an age where people of like minds can create heaven on earth. And it doesn't have to necessarily be through this particular spiritual practice. I see people, I'm guessing Deepak Chopra, I don't know, but I know Panash Desai has been doing these call to calm meditations every morning since the beginning of the pandemic. It's got, you know, I don't know how many thousands of people around the world putting out this good energy. And the Yoko farming is similar to that. It, it's, it's tying together uh, a recognition that plants and nature and the animals wants to be in communication with humans as well as the divine and recognizing that and acknowledging the plants and animals and and asking for apologizing for you know not serving them as well as we could and and asking them you know to participate and maybe move on to the next stage of their plant life to become compost or goat or chicken food or or people food and you know i haven't seen it yet but i've heard the stories asking who wants to be harvested today and having the plants wave back at you i haven't seen this yet this is new to me but this is what i'm this is what i'm attempting to practice well i'm somebody who when people are talking about all the shows that they binge on like on netflix or something I watch documentaries. This is a perfect time for a sponsor break. 
you know that I love Audible. I talk about it all the time. And the discussion that we're having, The Secret Life of Plants, uh, there are a number of books, The Wisdom of Plants, The Wisdom of Nature. I found all these things on Audible. And Audible's offering you a free trial for 30 days. There's a lot in there, not just audio books. And I highly recommend those books, and you can hear what Cynthia's been talking about as far as honoring plants and how they respond to you. You can find the link for that in the show notes. It's audibletrial.com forward slash A-L-I-T-L-C. And now let's go back to continue this discussion with the tests that have been done. Plants are far superior to us. Plants, they move. If you can sit really still and watch a plant for an hour, you'll see it move. It it Mm -hmm. will turn. And everything that you were just saying, and when, like, if I'm dumping out some water off my deck, I warn the grass it's coming. There's a whole bunch of water's going to come down. If I'm mowing the lawn, I'll tell the grass. You're going to have all this shaking in the machine because I imagine getting cut that way is traumatic for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just honoring and the work that has been done scientifically shows that plants go out way farther than any humans have been capable of doing in light years. And they Mm -hmm. have spontaneous communication. It's no time passes. It's just right there. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I have to send some book titles your way because I think you'd really love them. So, yeah, what you were saying about that farm, I've always talked to my plants. Mm-hmm. And, and if I've I'm, always talked to my animals, but I'm not good at talking to plants. I'm having to learn. Well, you'll get responses. Mm-hmm. Well, they're they're growing for me. The ones that I'm the ones that I'm talking to and and stroking and stuff. The ones that I thought I had killed in the first move when I didn't move them in the house that night when I was told it wasn't going to be that cold. Well, yeah, um, <laughs> they're coming back, and I've got lots of new green growth. And yeah, I know they feel the love. Mm-hmm. They're not really different from people from animals. Right. They want affection. They want to be acknowledged and and included. And and, uh, all the studies that have been done, at first they were called ridiculous, but they've been scientific, such as that is the scientific method. That's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. It reveal that it's very accurate that plants respond to people and how you talk to them and how you treat them and there's no doubt because those studies have been replicated like hundreds of times. So it's not, oh, well, and of course, whatever you observe will impact what you see. Mm-hmm. That's true. So we've talked about a lot of really cool things today. And I'm wondering if there might be one message that you want to be sure to leave with everybody today. One message that's so hard. Believe in yourself and and spread love in the world because that's why you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I was <laughs> in a class with somebody yesterday, and he was saying, if you're wanting to get better seats on an airplane and you're behind somebody who's complaining, just step up and smile and be nice and thank the person for putting up with the other one. And he said, just be loving. It's like, why wouldn't you be loving all the time? When I call and and I have what many years ago would have been a complaint because something I bought's not working, I need help, something's wrong. I'm always nice to the people and I always get great responses and I don't understand why you wouldn't be. Mm. And that's the energy that I get from you. So everything that you do is so full of love and I'm so grateful that you're out there, that you're teaching, that you're sharing and we'll make sure that all your links to everything are in the show notes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you, Miss Allie B, because, you know, I just love you and everything you do. So thank you. Thank you. And 
it's a mutual admiration society. I just, I love life and I love people and I love watching the, I'm watching on my window, the animals in mating season. It's quite fascinating. (laughs) Yes, in the spring. Yes. Very well, thank you so much for doing this. And thank you for joining us. And I know how busy you are. And I want to remind everybody, join our Facebook group, make a new friend, ask your questions, look for special offers out there. And I didn't mention it again today, but we have our Let's Get Metaphysical book club with the book being, and you heard her on episode 50, D. Wallace, born giving birth to a new you if you really want to know how to change your world and do it easily and powerfully join the book club and all the links i'm mentioning are in the show notes including the link to our website where you can listen to any episode or watch it it's your choice and we appreciate if you leave a review there easy easy to do on that site remember enjoy every moment because you don't experience your world out there you're hearing it inside your head you're seeing the processes inside your head you're tasting smelling feeling with touch everything's happening inside you so i end capital J-O-Y and I look forward to seeing you here next time you've been listening to a talk on the wilder side thanks for tuning in to let's get metaphysical be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode and while you're at it please leave a rating and review and be sure to share it with your friends tune in every Monday for more exciting insights and wisdom on life beyond your five senses until next time take a small step in a new direction start now